Welcome to our presentation. Uh, it's called Integrating Upstream Projects Downstream. So I, I wanted to like figure out some catchy name, but in the end it's just like yet another talk about the packet project. And as you can see, we finally have a nice logo and we have stickers over there. Uh, but don't, uh, the, I won't give you the stickers just like that. There are three ways you can earn it. So the first way, if you are already a packet user, and you can prove it, like you can have sticker. The second way is that we'll have a small contest in the middle of the presentations, and if for correct answers, uh, you, you can get a sticker. And the third way, uh, okay, what's the third way? Oh, right, uh, in the end, we'll have Q&A, and if you ask questions, you can get a sticker, but you can, I mean, only for good questions. And if you want to know like, what good questions are, you can ask these people over there. They are from the Pecky team and they'll tell you what the good questions are. <laughs> okay, so let's start. And speaking of the team... Okay, I think it's happening. Speaking of the team and they are not seeing the slides. Oh, so let me fix that. Oh, I don't know how to do it. I mean, they should be seeing. So, okay, so let's try again. Okay, clone, run present. Okay, one. And now it should work. If it doesn't, oh, nice. So, speaking of the team, uh, this is the team uh, at the moment. Uh, there are some changes, like from the last year, if you remember this picture, I shuffled it a bit and uh, some people left, and we have some new people. Uh, so if you ever get in touch with us, open a pull request or create an issue, like one of the faces will be replying, so please be nice to them and you can meet them over here. Uh, so that's the team. Uh, uh, who am I? So I'm Tomáš. Uh, I work as an engineer for Red Hat for almost eight years. And so, so my role is supposed to be like either technical lead or team lead, like sometimes managers say one, Sometimes they say other, so today I decided to be T lead. And in the past I was working on containers, right now it's automation, integration and all this kind of stuff, so let's go. Uh, this was the slide I was editing like five minutes before the talk started, because Dominica told me yesterday that I should have it as a slide. Like back then there was like a list of bullet points, but usually when I create talks I try to do a small mind map of, lo of what I want to talk about, so this is what we, what we do today. And probably you can't read it, like that's the point, but so I'll give you a small intro to the project. I mean we've been talking about Packet for like a year, and I'm pretty sure that you already heard all the intro, uh, intro talks, so let's don't do that, I'll do it very quickly, and then we'll talk about project, what's happening right now, what we achieved so far, uh, if there were some challenges, and then uh, we'll talk about the future and then we can finish with Q&A. Okay, let's do this. So, Packet, what's Packet? Uh, Packet is a GitHub app which helps you integrate your upstream project into federal operating system and CentOS stream. That's it. Really easy, right? Uh, let's show some pictures. So, this is how it looks in, in real. Uh, if you are a GitHub user, which I'm pretty sure that most of you are GitHub users, you are very familiar with this interface. So what's happening here is that uh, Dominika opened a pull request and Franta gave review and said, yeah, it's fine, but just please rebase. Then she rebased and you can see the, oh, I can use the laser, that's nice. You can see the green tick, which means that the commit is good and like nothing breaks. And then when you click on it, you can see like all the checks. And one of the checks is actually packet, uh, which means that uh, like the builds of RPMs of the project where the, this PR is coming to uh, passed and even the tests like you like we use that RPM in testing and even the tests passed so yay everything is good we are also using Zool like as another uh, testing layer you can see it over here and so we merge the commit obviously everything's good uh, so let's pack it pretty much I mean now we could finish if this was an intro talk but let's do something more fun and talk about what, the, what we've achieved so far. Uh, so as you can see, you can enjoy a platform where you can integrate your upstream projects into Fedora OS. And so far, there was nothing like this which you could do it easily. I mean, here you can 
So it's like in five minutes you can set it up for your project and you can integrate into Fedora and you know like what versions, uh, like you can be sure that your upstream project works inside Fedora with the versions of software and dependencies which are inside. Like otherwise, in the past it usually worked like that, that the upstream project created a new release, then the downstream maintainer picked the release up, tried to build it in Fedora, realized, okay, versions don't match, we need to fix it upstream, and then get back to upstream, fix it upstream, then get back to Fedora, and like this infinite loop. Like with Packet, you can do it while you are working on the change. So, and this actually happened to us like recently when we were switching one of the dependencies, we started using, oh, hello, we started using uh, Marshmallow, uh, it's like the schema definition something and our colleague created a pull request and then we realized that in Rawhide there is a new version of Marshmallow which doesn't work with our software but the other versions work just fine. So while we were working on the code we realized that it wouldn't work in Fedora and we could fix it right away. So that's, that's so nice. And yesterday if you were at the talk from Miro uh, there was a question like if packet or like the whole thing can replace Travis CI and Miro replied no but I reply yes you can like we can easily repl uh, we can replace it but not easily like, the bar to get into Travis CI is so easy you just like write two scripts and then you can test your code in Travis CI but in packet it's like more complex because as I said we are working with RPMs and then we are testing in like real VMs so which means that like there is like a little bit high bar, you need to write a spec file or get the spec file, make sure it works, like get it either to upstream or download it during the build process. Like, I, I mean, it's no problem, but like it's a little high bar, but also high value because you are working like with latest Fedora bits. If you look at what Travis CI is, you are getting some Ubuntu version from 16th century, which super old dependencies and I'm, uh, I'm no, like does anyone want it, like really? I would say that every, like all the developers want the latest things, right? So that's why everyone in Travis uses containers and gets the latest builds, but like why not use directly VMs with the latest software? Uh, so that's, that's what we are working on. Uh, okay, I, yeah, I think I talked about everything it's written on a slide. Uh, so the only thing which we are being asked actually by the DNF team, what they would love to have from Packet is like having uh, cross pull request dependencies because the way they work is that they have multiple repositories and they for example introduce a new API in one repository and want to use it in pull request in different repository and like they need to cross reference the pull request so that like they are built together but so far we can't do it with packet but hopefully in future we'll, we would be good. <laughs> okay so now's the time for the game so does anyone want to play the game? Oh, nice. <laughs> so it's a small preparation for tomorrow. Like if you are familiar with DevConf, like the last presentation of DevConf is when Radek creates a game and then we like do all this uh, nonsense. We stand up, sit down and win uh, hands. We won't do that today. I mean, we just play a small game. Okay, so, okay, I have it written down. So first question is, uh, so the, the Packet project, it's like two things. It's like command line tool and the service itself but it has actually more repositories. And my question is, how many repositories does uh, like all the packet project has, like let's say the production deployment? And I can make it easier for you. So do you think it's six or less? Who thinks it's six or less? Yes. Okay, so I'm sorry you won't get the sticker, but the other ones can get it. Okay. It's actually eight repositories. Uh, it's actually the service code itself, the command line tool, then we have documentation, I mean it's also important, it's like part of the production deployment, then we have deployment repository, then we have secrets repository, then we have sandboxing repository, come on guys, help me. So alright, then we have Ogre, which is the library we are using to interact with git for this, and number eight. Sorry? Oh yeah, okay, research it. Oh, we have another repository when we are doing research on like various topics. Uh, yeah, eight. We have actually much more, but let's say the eight are really important. <laughs> okay, another question. So, uh, since we are working for Red Hat and we are deploying packet service into OpenShift, and if you are familiar with Kubernetes OpenShift, you are familiar with pods, right? 
Like, do you know what blocks are in? And if you don't, it's like containers, like the same thing. So, how many uh, pods in OpenShift does the production packet service deployment take? And let's do it the other way around. So, let's say, do you think it's uh, 10 or more? Oh, nice, you have high hopes, thank you. But it's actually seven. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it will be 10 in like half a year because like the, the pods which take like most resources are workers, like which do all the like cloning and creating source RPMs and sending it to somewhere else. So right now we are like three workers, but I'm pretty sure that we'll be like upping it like every month by one worker. Uh, so do you want to know what the other are? Okay. But, but that's tricky, I mean, so, okay, so we are using sandboxing like during the build process because if you think about packet, it's like code execution as a service. I mean, you literally have spec files and shell scripts in your repository and we are executing everything in our infrastructure. So, I mean, no one tried to hack it so far, but I'm pretty sure that sooner or later someone will try. So we are executing all the commands in a sandbox. So that's why like we were having this small discussion like whether the sandbox pods also are being, I didn't count them because they are like a little different. But the other one is like database, HTTP server, another database and uh, three, uh, the three workers and then we have the import image thing, right? Okay, that's it. So, okay, any other questions? Oh, I actually did this one yesterday because, so, since we are deploying into OpenShift and we are using Ansible to deploy everything, so all is YAML, and I was counting every YAML line in, like, in our service repository and deployment repository. So, how many lines of YAML code we have in the two of them? So, do you think it's uh, 3,000 or less? It's actually more. <laughs> it's almost three and a half. <laughs> no, no, I excluded those. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be insane. And I actually realized that in one repository we have all the YAML suffix with YAML and the other one is YML. I mean, what the hell, like we should fix that. That's irritating as hell. Okay, two more questions, I think. No, three actually. Uh, Okay, this one is super easy, and you need to like you you need to make it right. So, how many team members does per, uh, Packet Project have? I mean, you saw the picture. Go on. Uh, you are close. Not ten. One less. It's nine. <laughs> okay, two more questions, and this one's actually Steph will like this question. So, how many projects? Uh, are using packet, and do you think it's uh, 80 or more? Less. <laughs> oh, nice! You should get not just sticker but also like everything else because it's 101. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, the truth is we were cheating like this much, <laughs> but it's 101. <laughs> And we actually did it yesterday. Like yesterday was the time. So, so the deal was that if you got over 100 by Devcon, I had to dye my hair blonde. Oh, oh yeah. So Steph says that the deal was if we do 100 by Devcon, Steph will dye his hair to blonde. But the thing is, we did it at Devcon, so I think it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you dyed it already, so I think you're good. <laughs> no, now it needs to happen. This is Okay. And okay, last questions. And do you have a, can you show do you have them on a <coughs> slide that you can show us? Like the projects? Uh I don't have it in slides, but we can do it in at the end. I can <laughs> show it to you. Uh, yeah, during the QA. Uh, oh okay, okay. So and the last question is, uh, you saw the amount of builds and tests. Uh, and on the picture there was like six of them. So how many builds and tests we submitted so far? I don't have the precise number, I have like good estimation, but what do you think, how many builds and tests we already submitted during the life, I know, the past six months? You think it's more than a thousand? Yeah. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, obviously it's more than 1,000. I would say that we are like around 10,000 because, I mean, the biggest users of Packet projects is the, like the Packet team itself, so we are <laughs> building like mad, so. <laughs> okay, so that, that was fun. Oh, let's do something less fun, which means me talking. Uh, so how's the project doing on the like other side? Is that we try to release often, like every two weeks, pretty much when our sprint ends, and we deploy uh, often. We even have CI CD set up. Uh, like, it's kind of fake CD, I would say, but I mean, it's in the end, it's still continuous deployment. We are actually, like, every week, we build all the images and deploy them, and then on Monday, we come to work and realize everything's broken and spend two days fixing it and deploying, like, five times a day. Uh, but it works. <laughs> and we try to automate everything, so all those three and a half thousand files of YAML are automating almost everything so we can redeploy the production with one command which is like awesome and we don't need to do anything. Uh, yeah, we also have outages and the biggest problem is that like, if you think about it, the packet service, it, uh, it talks to so many different services uh, and those services sometimes have outages which means that we have outages and it's like, it's complicated. Uh, like so far the worst offender past few weeks is Fedora messaging like sometimes we just stop consuming sent messages which means that like we don't get information that the builds are done and it's like really bad and Irka is always mad because needs to fix it so yeah but uh, we already have like plans how to fix it like don't rely on those services so like poll whether the build is done and just don't rely only on the messaging and like other things so if you are already users and you are like upset with the outages, like we are sorry, but we are definitely working on it and in coming weeks it should be much better and much smooth. And obviously we are helping people to get on board of Packet. So if you want to try using it, like don't think that it's up to you to figure it all out. Like the whole team is the at DevConf, we are here for you and we can set up a meeting and talk to you and show it show you what it can do and how to set it up. And today we have workshop, so I have another slide about it, and we can do it on the workshop. So that's how the project is doing. Uh, so how do we develop Packet actually? So we develop it like mad. I mean, if I don't, if I don't watch for notifications for a day, there is like so many pull requests merged and new issues created. So yeah, it's it's really it's a live project. It's changing all the time, and it's it's really great. Uh, we are doing a lot of code reviews, obviously. So we only merge code which is being code reviewed, unless it's Yirka. Yirka likes to do self-merges and then realizes it's broken and then tries to fix it for an hour. <laughs> but things happen, I mean, that's usually happen when all of us are out of work and no one can give him, give him a code review. We are actually heavy users of pre-commit hooks, which are really awesome, which means that we develop code locally, then we run the pre-commit hook, which will change everything, will format our code, to, runs all the linters, and even tells us that we need to rebase, which is great and uh, awesome, and mm, we have nice linear history, so definitely use pre-commit hooks if you want to like save your sanity. Uh, as I said, we are doing Scrum or like sprints or something like that. We also have staging environment. We also have like continuous deployment set up for staging environment, which means that we deploy to staging like every hour, uh, the master branch of package service. Uh, and that's that's very cool because whenever we merge something, like within hours, we know it, we, if it really works uh, everywhere. We also have like dedicated repository uh, with pull requests being opened to test various use cases, and we use this to verify that it really works, like in staging or production. So, uh, and also if you think about it, since we communicate with so many services and there's like so many moving pieces like our testing process is like worth another presentation so that's why I only made it on one line so we have like so many different types of testing that it's like outrageous like unit testing, integration, functional then this like different pull requests opened and then we try to hit the service and figure out if it works uh, and, and one thing we are using is uh, called Recure it's also, oh that was the final Git repository I forgot about it Okay, so Recura is a project we are using to actually record network uh, operations and then we replay them in the CI process. And if you know more how it works and how you can use it, so come 
tomorrow at 3 p.m. Honza and Franta will give a, give a talk about it. Uh, okay, so do we have any challenges so far? Actually, no, I mean, everything's going just fine. I see it, so. <laughs> so the thing is, yeah, I mean, everything, was, everything is on cluster fire. So I decided to rename that term because so right now everyone is deploying to clusters and these clusters are always on fire. So yeah, everything is on cluster fire, especially the infrastructure. Uh, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so, so the other challenge we have is that uh, since Packet has like so high goals, we are getting so many requests like, okay, we would love to use it, but we are using this kind of workflow, so you need to implement this and that in order for us to use it. And we have like 20 requests like this, then we have like 50 different requests to change user experience, and like we are just nine people, and we didn't even wear nine people like two months ago. We had to like refill our racks to get new people, or, or like to refill the existing racks. Uh, so we were like our velocity, like working on code was pretty low, but it should get better right now since we are in full uh, within the team. So yeah, please uh, come with us with the requests and like we usually try to prioritize like uh, if it's something very important or something affects so many people, we prioritize it and work on it as soon as possible. But if it's something like which is only affects you and it's like small issue, it's very likely like we won't have time to fix it. So like either send us a pull request or please be patient and maybe someday we'll be able to work on it. Uh, okay, more challenges. Spec files, I mean, did you ever use RPM spec files? I mean, they are really hard. And what's even like more hard is to try to parse them. I mean, there were so many issues parsing spec files that it's like, actually the first time we were trying to onboard kernel, it just blow away, like parsing kernel spec files. So yeah, spec files are really hard. Whew. And another thing which is hard is running a service. I'm not sure what you guys are working on, but like running a service 24-7, that's really hard. And if you want the service to be like scalable, secure, and someone needs to operate it and like resolve incidents and verify it works and yeah, it's, it's really hard and like for us, for, for the team, I mean it's challenging, but I would say we are doing good, we are good, getting better and I'm pretty sure that in one year we'll, I'll have completely different talk. And my favorite uh, running a production service is no route to host. That's, uh, that's happening in our cluster in like one, one in a hundred requests ends with no route to host and how do I debug it? I don't even have root access to the, uh, to the servers or so no route to host and we just reschedule the job and hopefully like next time it won't be no route to host. And yeah, user experience. I already talked about it and I can give you a good example about how user experience is really hard is that we have two people. We have Lars. Is Lars here? I can't see you. Oh no, you are not here. So Lars uh, requested from us that <coughs> Hey, package service gives us too many comments, it's just like too verbose, please make it less verbose. We're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense, so we'll work on it. And then we have Yarda who said exact opposite. It's not verbose enough, please make it like spam more comments and bigger messages. It's like, okay, so what should we do? <laughs> like obviously you should make it configurable, but this is like the good example that uh, user experience is really hard, everyone expects something different. Uh, Okay, so integrating upstream code downstream is so much fun. <laughs> and we are actually nearing at the end of the presentation. So what's the future? I would say the future is like no carbon dioxide, but this is probably the not environmental conference. So let's talk about the future for Peggy project. Uh, and yeah, you tell us. I mean, we are all based on the requests. So pretty much what our users tell us or we, what we feel like should be doing, that's what we are doing. And I can't tell you because it changes every day. But if you send us requests, we prioritize them and we'll work on them. Uh, as I said, user experience, we can make it better every time and we are doing it. And we would finally love to finish the Fedora RPM release automation so that you don't need to touch like Fedora services, Fedora disk, build it in Koji or anything like that. You can do it everything from upstream and Packet would be able to do it. So that's our plan. We are halfway through, we just need to like finish it and hopefully uh, after DEFCON it will be time to do it. Okay, that's future. 
And as I said, workshop, we have it today, 3.30 at C something, which is hidden somewhere, and it's gonna be amazed to get there, but if you get there, we can have workshop and talk about whatever you want and help you onboard your project on Packet. And what the week, I'm pretty sure that, like, okay, next slide is q and I'm pretty sure one of the questions would be like, what the weeks actually, like, we have so many people with weeks. So do you wanna hear the story of weeks? Okay, so our manager over here, Steph Walter, he likes to wear wigs, he likes to wear them like in the office and it's so much fun. So one day he came to Brno because like so many people report to him in Brno and we, we had nice dinner, then we continued with beers obviously like Brno uh, and we had more beers and we started trying Steph's wig and talking about like, okay, we all, we all should get wigs, right? And we should wear them at DEF CONF at the same day. <laughs> So that's the week. So whole, so you can easily identify the Peki team or even the whole cyborg group. Like that's our whole name of our uh, group uh, in weeks, and uh, you can talk to us, and we'll be happy to chat. So that's it. That was my presentation. I'm pretty stormy for it. I expect it to take more, but we have more time for questions and answers. Okay, so you are asking whether you need to like build the RPMs or you just want to test it, like like test it from Git repository, that, that's your question. Oh yeah, you uh, yes, you can like you can only use use the CI part of packet, like just build RPMs of your projects and then test them in the VMs. I mean that's that's just fine. And we can help you set it up. <laughs> Oh, nice. So we are all good. <laughs> so, any more questions? Yo, uh, how's the GitLab integration going? Oh, GitLab. So, another question? Miro told us yesterday to ask you. Ah, okay. So, can you please tell Miro, don't, like, don't do this? Uh, okay, so, GitLab integration. Uh, yeah, I mean, we would love to uh, give you GitLab integration, but it's like, it's a lot of work. I mean, doing the GitHub integration that took us months to write it, like to parse all the GitHub events and make sure it works and it looks nice and everything. So like doing GitLab integration, that's like months work. So you are asking us to do months work. No, I'm asking. Oh, no, Vlad is asking. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, if there is enough people, like, I don't know, like tens or even hundreds of using like GitLab, we would love to do GitLab integration. So uh, we definitely have an issue open upstream. So if you want GitLab integration, find that issue in our subscribe. upstream project. Okay. And not subscribe, like comment, hey, I want GitLab integration as well. And if there will be like 10 comments or something like that, we'll realize, okay, we probably need to do GitLab integration. So. Yeah, but, thanks. But, um, on, I think on Monday we're going to be talking about this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, something that would see if we if GitLab integration is, is becomes a priority. Mm -hmm. So it's not like something in the far distant day future. I mean, it could be that, oh wow, this is not the case, but it's kind of things are coming together to push us on that direction. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. we have exactly this code it's one of the manager for GitLab, uh, but it's going to internet infrastructure uh, right ahead. Then Okay, so that's actually two requests. You are asking us to do integration with GitLab.com and then with custom GitLab instances, right? Custom, yeah, we have GitLab. Oh. <laughs> okay, so please write down the use case okay. and we'll talk about it since we sit on the same floor. <laughs> okay, cool, thank you.
Oh, oh, right, yeah, Franta gave a good comment that if you are using the packet tool, like, you can already do it from GitLab, but I'm pretty sure that you want the CI part when, like, packet interacts with your pull request, and that's the hard thing, like, to get the webhook responses and respond back to GitLab and all these things. Uh, okay, so, more questions. I think Kevin had a question. Yeah, so you said your priorities kind of change based on requests and so forth. Is there somewhere where we can see what that List is at any given time and like packet the best place? So, uh, so as I said, we are doing okay uh, for the recording. So, the question is like about the priorities and where everyone can see them. Uh, so, yeah, I said we are doing Scrum and Sprints and we are doing it in internal Jira instance. So, yeah, it's not very transparent, uh, but at the same time, we are using the upstream Git, uh, GitHub trackers. And we sometimes have like milestones over there and uh, like labels with high priority and all these things. So uh, you can watch it over there, what we are working on. And I would say that like we could do some, maybe some mirroring from Jira to GitHub and maybe like set up some labels and describe it somewhere how, how it works. Like for example, like set labels that active in Spring that we are working on. We, yeah, yeah, we can definitely work on it. Thank you for a question. But the place where I found most interesting about your priorities was the, the status document for onboarding projects. Oh, yeah. It seems like when a whole bunch of different projects need a certain feature that goes higher than priorities. That's what I noticed from your thing. So. Oh, yeah, that, that's a good comment, Steph. So we have actually one document where we write down discussions with different projects and teams, like what they need. And it's like one document, and based on the document, we try to like prioritize for next sprints. So, uh, yeah. That's in GitHub. Yeah, yeah, it's in GitHub, and it's hidden, like nobody can find it, and we should probably change that. <laughs> Some more questions? Yes, uh, in the back. Yeah, is it possible to do different ac <coughs> actions based off a of branch? Like, for example, on Master, I want to build and test, but like, on a, if I push a tag, Uh, so the question is if uh, you can configure packets to do different actions based on uh, branches or uh, tags. Uh, like not right now, but the way you describe it, the way it's the way it works. Uh, and okay, what what I mean? So right now we can, or okay, you can't configure the branch thing. Like packet would react to all the branches, like all the pull requests. It, it actually re reacts only to pull requests in the CI mode. And in the like deploy to Fedora or like push my new upstream release to Fedora, that only works with tags or like GitHub releases. But it's not configurable at the moment. But if you have an idea like how it should work or how it should work for you, like we can talk to you or you can like create an issue and work on it. Yes, please. Was that the question? <laughs> ah, okay. So, so the comment was that there is a POC set up in Fedora with Zool and whether we could work together, right? Uh, so yeah, please come to the workshop and we can talk about this. Like, uh, I, I think like you, if Packet was able to like push jobs to Zool, that would be super cool, or like some way to interact together, that, like that would be great. Okay, more questions. What if I'm just downstream packager but not upstream maintainer? I mean, upstream, from my point of view, sometimes from time to time doesn't care about packet or integration with Fedora. Mm -hmm. But I would like to use CI to test new mm -hmm. releases of upstream project into Fedora, mm -hmm. but I have no power downstream. Okay. So the question is if, like, if someone doesn't have like upstream commit access and wants to use packet anyway. So the answer is very simple. You can fork upstream and like set up packet over there and use it over there and like manage your the repository on your own. Cool. And is there a way how to update automatically update for from upstream releases? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the question is if packet is able to update it automatically and synchronize it to repositories, and the answer is no. <laughs> but it's a very good like it's a very good feature request. I think it's on our board somewhere. Just didn't have time to like work on it. So, 
Славку. Uh, yeah, uh, the question is if Packet works with other projects which are not RPM based, like something else than Fedora or CentOS. Yeah, the answer is no, uh, because like right now we have it hard coded, like spec file and all these things. No, I, the, 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 the question is like, uh, it would be a project that, that would uh, work with like Fedora or something like Okay, so sorry I misunderstood your question. So the question is if you can use Packet on a project which is not in Fedora and the answer is yes, obviously. I mean, that's what I did yesterday. That's what I thought was the 100 project because I want to add uh, Niancat package into Fedora. So the first I set it up uh, with Packet, make sure that it builds and today hopefully I'll create a review request on Fedora. So yeah, you can set it up easily. I mean, being in Fedora is not the requirement, but on the other hand, since we are like building in federal infrastructure, uh, we, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, since we are building in federal infrastructure in Coper, and Coper has requirements on the software which you can build, so if the software is like licensed or like not even proprietary or something like that, uh, like you can't build it. So we only build like op true open source software which is, which could be integrated in Fedora. Okay, uh, yes, yeah, so, so, so actually the thing what we are talking about here right now is like terms of service. And right now we don't have terms of service because uh, three dots. Uh, what we have right now is that uh, well, if you want to use package service, like you click install for your projects, then we get requests that you did it. Then we look, look you up who you are and contact you and tell you, okay, so in order to use package you need to be uh, like you need to have a Fedora account system, which means that you need to sign uh, the agreement in Fedora that like you don't do harm and all, all these things. And then we would be able to like whitelist you and then you are able to use package. So that's how we have it right now. So in future, hopefully we'll have terms of service where all these things will be written down that uh, you can't use proprietary software, you can't use like license software on these things. So we don't need a whitelist anymore, but we need the terms of service. And we are working on that with the legal department and it just takes long. Yeah, and uh, they said first start this way. Once you get traction, then we'll invest the time to put together terms of service. Okay. So it's not like we're avoiding this, but this is the chosen approach. Yeah, this way. SLA for packet. So for the recording, Slavic wants 
to have S like SLA, and we'll talk about it after the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> More questions? We have still have some time. Yeah? This, uh, <coughs> this one of the requirements to use packet to have uh, RPM spec file upstream. Oh, RPM spec files in upstream, is that a requirement? That's our most favorite questions. We, we are getting it like so often. No. <laughs> uh, you don't need to have the spec file upstream, but you need spec file in order to build your software. So in the like setup process, you can just download this from, I don't know, Fedora, this Git, or from your favorite URL or somewhere else. So yeah, you don't need it upstream, but you need it. But if you uh, using only the the CI part, do you Yes, because we want to build the package first, then we install it in the VM, and then we run the tests. Actually, we were discussing this, whether, uh, like, if we want to enable people, like, to bypass that, don't have spec file, and test directly, like the Travis CI or Cir Circus CI mode, but so far we didn't decide if we want to do it or not, so... Just call it uh, repository instead of the mm -hmm. Yep. So far, very good questions. You all get stickers. <laughs> yeah? So, you said that parsing spec files is hard. Yes. Have you thought about uh, adding some feature for uh, newcomers to give them an easy, easier way for packaging, to uh, not force them to have a spec file, for example, invent some kind of a different language? That you would then like, generate spec file for them? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question, and the question is if uh, if we can uh, help newcomers who are new to Fedora and RPM uh, generate help them generate spec files in their upstream projects so that you c they can use it. Uh, I wish Jan Strzotka was here because this he is the QE engineer on our team, and this is his favorite topic. He talks about it all the time, and the answer is like it's such a hard problem. I mean, spec files are. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't have an answer for you. I'm sorry. I mean, it's a very good request. Uh, it would be awesome to have it in packet service and in packet itself, but it's just like such a hard problem to solve. So we can talk about it like over beers and that would be pretty proactive, I guess, but it's such a hard problem. Oh yeah, so, so the comment is that we should nudge people so they work in Fedora and start maintaining or become packagers in Fedora. Yeah, that makes sense, but like general upstream developers don't care about like spec files and all these things. They want to develop their little baby and not care about distributions. So we should make it easier to work with spec files, to generate them, to update them. And there's some work happening. I mean, there are spec file generators and we could try using them. Maybe that sounds like a good start. But so far we had so many requests like make the service work actually, make it secure, make it scalable and this was more important than like uh, polishing spec files thing. So maybe it could be our next target. So more questions? Okay, no more. Oh, um, last one. Uh, you mentioned that things uh, Okay. So, uh, the question is about if we actually need to parse spec files. Yeah, that's a very good question. It's, it was actually a technical decision to like uh, the way we did it, like parse spec files and work with them. I mean, yes, we could do like set or grep or do regular expressions, but like the thing that Packet does with spec files is that it changes version. Uh, like by default, it uses git describe to get like the unique version so that when you build it, you can actually address like the commit the build was uh, did from. So that's one thing we are doing, changing version. Then we are changing source line so that, uh, the, so that it points to the correct tarball. Then we edit the uh, 
the setup line in prep section. So again, so that all of this madness works together, and then we create new changelog entry. So we do four things to the spec file. And yeah, we decided to like parse them. We are actually using Rebase helper for that if you were in the presentation yesterday, and it does all the parsing and all the magic. So um, yeah, that's the thing. Like that is a technical decision. Maybe maybe at some point we realize that like there's so many spec files we can't parse and we need to figure out some new mechanism to work with them or, or fix the parser or I don't know, but so far it's like kinda working. Ah, uh, more questions? I have a question about That's a very good question. So, uh, patches in spec file. So in ideal world, the like if you have the spec file upstream, there are no patches because I mean you're in upstream. You don't need to like have dedicated patches in upstream. But that usually happens in downstream. Uh, so the way we solve this is that like package is able to operate on like two types of repositories. Like one type is like no normal upstream repository, and the other one uh, I already like the pitched it a little bit, it's the, it's the one when you fork upstream and then you add the spec files, add the, uh, I don't know, uh, packet YAML and maybe additional commits and in downstream the additional commits means that they are patches, right? So packet is to work with such repository and the additional commits in transforms them into patch files so that they are included in the spec file and in the, in the downstream. So yeah, it works like this. We call it source git, it's on our website. You can go packet.dev slash source git, I think, and you'll be able to read about it. And it's all supported and works. Okay. And the reason for that is that it's easier to take those patches and open those folders all the way back upstream. Even if they hate you, it's easier for them to hate you. Um, and actually bring it back to where it's supposed to be. That should be the easiest path. Sends them as far back as soon as they can. So by keeping it as long as possible in the form, this commits and, and only converting the patches to the last step, that makes the job of that uh, that you were describing is much easier to go between the two. And does it mean that I have to maintain the patches and the spec file on two places? No. I have Federal's this JIT. Yeah. Spec file and patches. Yes. Then I have a fork of upstream yeah. project with spec file mm -hmm. patches. Uh, Your this gets taken care of for you. It transforms that stuff into patches for you. So, I mean, as much as you can go and look at it, you don't have to you feel like you have to do any work. Yes, so ideally you work in the upstream repository and Packet will take care of this git for you so don't, you don't need to touch it. Like, that, that, that's the idea. More questions? Okay, thank you very much for coming and see you at the workshop.